welcome to Love for the Truth Radio, a program devoted to encouraging you to be a contender of the faith in an ever-changing church culture. On Love for the Truth Radio, we will discuss current issues and challenging views along with biblical truth that can affect our Christian worldview and how we live out our faith. And now, here's your host, Cindy Hartline. Welcome to the program. Are you wondering what on earth happened to America's Judeo-Christian ethics, laws, and moral compass? It seems our nation has gotten way off the mark these days, and many are asking what is going on in our societies, culture, education, and political systems, and even the church. No doubt change has taken place in America, and many would agree that the change is not good. Perhaps people's minds are set on different philosophies and doctrines that take them away from the moral, righteous life that only one could obtain through the gospel of Jesus Christ and Judeo-Christian ethics. Even our president and government leaders oftentimes have a bizarre way of thinking. Could it be political correctness and leftism that has infiltrated almost every area of our lives? Well, here to discuss the religion of leftism today is John Haller, researcher, commentator of Prophecy Update, a popular weekly video found on YouTube of current news and issues on geopolitics, culture, and the church. John is also a trial lawyer of 30 years, the co-founder and elder of Fellowship Bible Chapel in Columbus, Ohio, and John has spoken at national prophecy conferences, appeared on various radio programs and film projects, and is noted for being an excellent researcher. Welcome, John Haller, to Love for the Truth Radio. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Good to be with you again, Sunday. John, uh, well, we're friends, and, and, and I know that you are an excellent trial lawyer and researcher, um, but in relationship to the law, I was reading up on something that I basically just learned, and that was uh, the difference between uh, theonomous law and uh, Hieronymus law. And I learned that Theonymus law is when God's law is embedded in our hearts, so much so that we think the same things, desire to live the same way under the same rule. And at one time, Theonymus law was recognized as a natural law. We see this uh, in the Constitution uh, when we read, uh, we believe these truths to be self-evident, etc. There was an understanding of what everyone was thinking of. And it was referring to God's natural law. Then we have uh, heteronymous, am I saying that right? Heteronymous law. It is a law when the mainstream of the culture has a handful at the top that controls the masses. Now, we know that the only religion that falls under the the onimus law is the biblical is biblical Christianity, those who follow Jesus Christ according to the Bible, and therefore governed by him, by his example, uh, his gracious commandments, um, and his statutes. I believe that all other religions follow the Hieronymus law, dictators, leaders that control the masses. Uh, I, I look at Islam, for example. Uh, we're told they're told what to wear, uh, how to talk. Uh, you know, they basically are followers uh, to everything that that he dictates and disciplines. Um, so we're here to discuss. John, the religion of leftism. I believe that leftism is a cult religion that under the Hieronymus law controls the masses, uh, except it's not really a, a one person, though we know that it goes, we'll talk about where its origins are, but it's a philosophy, it's a, a way to think. So why don't we just start off, John, and let our audience know what the definition of leftism is, and uh, so they can get an understanding of the foundation of it. What is, uh, how do we define it, John? Well, first of all, let me just start off by saying that I believe that leftism is an incredibly powerful religion. It's a religion as powerful as Islam, mm. as powerful as Christianity, as powerful as Judaism. Wow. And so you see leftism sort of guiding a lot of the governments of the world today. I would define leftism simply as socialism. It's a, mm. it's an attempt. Uh, I think uh, one person who has traced some of the early history of this, probably somebody you should have on your show, is Martin Erdman. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dr. Erdman wrote a book looking at the historical development of sort of the New World Order, and he called his book Building the Kingdom 
of God on earth. Hmm. And he looked at the history of this from the late uh, 19th century up through about the mid-1930s and how different people were put in place and different people took control and put structures in place to ultimately bring about this socialism that they that they're trying to introduce. So I would I the simple definition that I would give to it is mm-hmm. socialism. Socialism. And you know we think of the socialism or the principles and views of the left. Uh, it's also socialism is embodying those principles, and I think we'll be talking about some of those principles during the show. Also, one of the definition is uh, advocacy or adherence to the doctrines of the le- left. So when we see that word doctrine of the left, you're right, John, it is a religion, uh, just like all the other religions. And you know what, it's, it's, a, it's a religion that people live their lives in and through. Um, I understand leftism to be a frame of mind by which people live, move, and have their being. Therefore, leftism is considered to be a religion, which evidently opposes biblical Christianity. Uh, Leftism is a controlled religion that acts as a cult and replaces all religion. And I think, John, we're seeing, um, I know that my eyes have been opened lately to see how this religion, this cult, is really affecting all areas of our lives. Uh, what are your thoughts about leftism, and in your opinion, has it infiltrated our government, culture, educational system, and even the church? Boy, it, it is so pervasive. It mm-hmm. is the predominant religion of the world today. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how, in just the, the short time that we have together, how we're going to be able to pull it all together. Right. But just look around at the things that have happened here in the United States, where we have brought in a leftist president, Barack Obama, and he has effected this change. One of the things that that sort of the the opposition, the the opposition forces that are going on, let's look at it in terms of left and right in our political culture today. Mm -hmm. We, We talk about justice, we talk about culture, we talk about democracy, we talk about civilization. But the problem is that people on the right believe that these words have definite meanings Mm -hmm. and they play out in a certain definite way. People on the left, though, they're talking a whole different language. So when you hear the concept justice, justice to someone. In fact, I just was watching Jim Wallace speak at the Parliament on World Religions that was held in Salt Lake City this past weekend, Mm -hmm. uh, and actually finished up last night. He was talking about justice. To him, justice means equality. Now, we know that that's not exactly what justice means, but the left, what they do is they redefine these things. Mm -hmm. And so when Barack Obama... If you remember, uh, during his campaign, just before the election in 2008, he said, we are five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Mm. And what he meant was he was going to change it. He was going to make it better. He was going to build his vision of utopia here in America. Yes. Now, Mm. the other way of interpreting what he meant by transforming was he was going to take a wrecking ball to all of the institutions that we think hold the fabric of society together. Right. And what has he done? We see this, we see Canada, who until yesterday was probably the last open government in the world, the last government to openly support the Jewish state of Israel. Hmm. And today, we get the results of the election yesterday, and Prime Minister uh, Stephen Harper was soundly defeated by a leftist, a, a guy who has in his back, uh, background, he was a snowboarder, he was a bartender, and now he's president, he's the, the premier of Canada, oh, um, Trudeau. Mm-hmm. And he is a leftist. What in, So as I conversed a little bit with some of my Canadian friends today, what I said was, that, you know, everybody's wondering what's going to happen. I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen to Canada, especially in light of 
what we've talked about in the past, the convergence and acceleration mm-hmm. of things that seem to be happening here in the end times. Yes. And I think at this point, there's no question that we live in those times. And one of the characteristics of those things is that things happen very quickly. So I told them, what, whatever has happened to America in the last eight years, seven years, mm-hmm you're going to see happen way more quickly. You're going to see, it's going to be like taking everything that Obama does and putting it in the car and stepping on the gas and accelerating yes. very quickly. Absolutely. That change will happen very quickly. So the, the fundamental core issue that we have is we, we don't even speak the same language. Mm-hmm. And this, is, this has manifested itself in many, many different areas. For example, one of the most recent apparent issues is marriage. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that for the whole of human history, marriage was defined as a union between a male and a female. No one questioned that. Everyone knew that that was the case. Mm -hmm. It was the way it was from the beginning of time. It was what Jesus said, God designed male and female. And they shall, and you shall leave your father and mother, and cleave unto your wife. Now what we have is we have a confusion. What is marriage? Well, for example, in the the area of, and I think I said this in one of my prophecy updates, it's not going to stop at marriage. This thing is going way beyond marriage. This thing, now we're into the area of gender confusion. That over a third of young adults between the ages of, I think, 14 and 30 say they wrestle with gender confusion in their own personal lives. So this stuff has very real consequences, very real things that are damaging to society. But on the left, they see, well, look, at we've opened marriage to all these other people. We don't really worry about people, whether they're male or female. And what it's done is it's, it's completely ripped apart, in my view, the, the moral fabric of society. It's, just, it's, it's absolutely stunning to see what's just happened just in the last year since, well, the last, uh, since June when the Supreme Court came down with its decision saying, hey, we don't care what you call marriage all along. You can't do that anymore. Right. Yeah, you know, John, I was thinking of that word justice that you said, you know, like to some people justice means, well, what is just before God? And that would be one man, one woman, holy matrimony, you know. And But when you look at the leftist thought, their justice is social justice. Give them what they want. Give them what they need, you know. And uh, I think that's what we're seeing, that they're the same words often used, but with totally different meanings. Uh, you know, we look at the leftism uh, has, I believe, athe- uh, atheistic roots. You know, no God, no rules, no safety, no refuge. And in actuality, you know, they think they're having freedom. We can be whatever gender we want. We can marry whoever we want. We don't have to get married. We can just live together. But in actuality, it's not freedom because there's consequences that come with sin, and we know that. And like you said, we look back at the Garden of Eden. Satan entices Eve to break the rules while promising that they would be as gods to know more than God. Right. You know, and I think that's what we're looking at. Yeah. And the first, and the first question that mm-hmm. Satan asks Eve is, has God said? And the answer is, yes, he has said. And Satan immediately tries to undermine the truth of what God has said. We're going on a break. We'll be right back with John Haller. So please stay tuned. You're listening to Love for the Truth Radio. We'll be right back. So please stay tuned. If you're a first-time listener, you'll find that on Love for the Truth Radio, we discuss news and views through a biblical worldview. We believe that the Bible is the inherent Word of God and the absolute truth that should be applied to every aspect of life. We don't proclaim to have a cap on the truth, but we do have a love for biblical truth. So please take everything you hear on this radio show to study and prayer. And thank you 
for listening to Love for the Truth Radio. If you just tuned in here to discuss the religion of leftism today is John Haller, researcher and commentator of Prophecy Update, a popular weekly video found on your YouTube channel, so please check it out. Uh, you, you know, John, in this segment we'll be talking about the political philosophy that will affect uh, how people are governed. So we're talking about government and law. Uh, but let's just reiterate again, we're looking at Genesis 3, the sin of self, really is what led the human race to destruction. A man's law will never bring freedom. However, the doctrine of leftism, which is very liberal-minded along with postmodern thought, thinks it can reach a nirvana of unity by putting all religions and doctrines aside to get along in a delusional type of peace and unity and freedom. But let's discuss how the political philosophy of leftism plays out in the political realm, John, um, keeping in mind that liberalism espouses uh, a core set of values and principles, uh, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press that are applied to every situation. However, leftism actually espouses a fascist interpretation of those principles with a selective application that serves only to further the leftist agenda. And in other words, one will experience freedom, however, only when complying to leftism's agenda, which opposes Christi Christianity, which complies to God's law for freedom. Uh, John, why don't we just start out with, uh, you know, what, how does it play out in the law? I mean, you're a trial lawyer. Um, how does leftism play out uh, through the law? Well, I've been a trial lawyer for 35 years now, mm -hmm. uh, so that dates me. <laughs> but when I started out, I, as all lawyers do, we go to training sessions. And in law school and in the seminars in my early years as a lawyer, the training was always about how to effectively present your facts, how to be a good presenter, how to be a good advocate. Mm. I don't know exactly when it was that it changed, but the seminars really, about 15 or so years ago, started to change, where it became not so much about how to effectively present facts, mm. but how to appeal to the emotion of wow. the jury and the judge so that you would get an emotional response, not one based on truth and law, but one based on people's emotions. And so that's what you see is you see this appeal to emotions, for example, in the area of marriage. Well, oh, why don't you want these these people who have same-sex attractions? They, they can love people. And it's just not really fair, and and they'll be so hurt, and they'll feel worthless. They'll feel like they're not a member of society if they're not allowed to participate. Now, mm -hmm. to which I would say is, everyone's allowed to get married. Mm -hmm. All males are allowed to marry a female. All females are allowed to marry a male. That's the way it always was. But now mm -hmm. we've gone to where it doesn't matter. And you know, the some of the language of the uh, Obergefell decision, which. Um, set up or struck down all laws that recognized marriages between a male and female, even Justice Scalia, I don't have the quotes in front of me, just was scathing in his attack on the majority decision. Hmm. And so what happens, this, this is fascism, leftism playing itself out right in front of our eyes. Yes, it is. It's a philosophical battle at its core. Mm -hmm. And so now it appeals, the appeal is to emotion. It's not fair that somebody doesn't have all the things that you have, regardless of the fact that maybe you work for it. It's playing out in front of us in Europe, for for goodness sake. Yes, it is. But ultimately, it goes back to the Garden of Eden, yes, it does. where you know Satan had Eve question, has God said? She said what God said, and then Satan said, and he really didn't mean that. And so this... Uh, sort of narrative has played out through human history, mm -hmm. the, the belief that we will be, create the kingdom of God on earth. We will recreate the Garden of Eden. It played out in Genesis chapter 11, and it's interesting, if you look at the patterns of Scripture, we know that what what was characteristic of the beginning will be characteristic of the end. In yes. fact, it will be maybe even worse. Mm -hmm. So we know that there was this questioning of God in the beginning, 
And then by the time we get to Genesis chapter 11 in the Tower of Babel, people are saying, well, we can be as God. We can make everything perfect. We will be as God. And this is exactly what's happening. And so when it comes into um, politics, it becomes very controlling. You have to do this this way because we are better, we know better, we will control things, we will make them better. It manifests itself, I think you've had Patrick Wood on your program, yes, who yes. talks about technocracy. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect, that's the socialist dream, that these elites that know better, that are smarter than all of us, they will control how we live and what we do mm-hmm. because they know better for us yes. than we know for ourselves. And it, so it, it's very fascist. And it's it's orientation, it's controlling. Mm -hmm. And in some respects, religions such as Islam, which are very controlling and very dictatorial about what you do, how you do it, uh, they're they're unified in many respects for quite a while. Now, eventually they diverge, but at least right now we see, for example, you see on the left, you see them saying nothing Mm -hmm. about... Islam or the the problems of Islam and the controlling things of Islam because in, in some respects they're unified in their control aspect that they think they're going to build this better society, this better world. And we know that that is false. God, when he saw it happening at Babel, he, he confused the languages. Yes. And frankly, that's where we are now. God yes. has confused our language. We when, when left and right talk now, we may use, as I said earlier, the same words, but we're talking about totally different things. Yes, yes, And that's yeah. why it's, it's hard to even engage in a discussion about these things with people on the other side. And mm-hmm. this, is, this is a philosophy thing. Uh, there, there's a book that I would highly recommend. It's called the, uh, it's, well, actually two books. Uh, one book would be uh, Diana West's book called American Betrayal. She traces this history starting back in about the 30s of lots of things. I think it's a very important book. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had a chance to read all the way through it. But another book that I think is very important, too, that's just come out recently, is a book by Michael Walsh called The The Devil's Pleasure Palace, uh, The Cult of Critical Theory and the Subversion of the West. And it's a brilliant book because he does go back to the Garden of Eden and traces this narrative, and then he ends up with... Uh, what is the Frankfurt School of yes. Socialism, Marxism, and how it, it you know, he, he sort of starts in World War, at the end of World War II. Mm-hmm. There's America, triumphant, free America, democratic America, triumphant, good values, we know what we're doing, we, we know who we are, and then this school of thought, this critical theory, comes into our our. Uh, especially through the education system at the universities. Yes. And I don't know if you ever had any of these. I took, uh, you know, uh, criminology and law courses and that type of thing in my undergrad and graduate school days. And I went to a Christian college, and then I went to graduate school Mm -hmm. at a, a fairly conservative town, Midwestern University. But my professor, who I was a graduate assistant, I was in the office next next to him, gave me a book called, uh, by a guy named Quinney, called Critique of Legal Order. And what it was was one of these critical, this is critical theory where it essentially tore apart from a Marxist socialist perspective Mm -hmm. the law, the legal system that we had in our country. Yes. And it was very disconcerting to see this done. And this is the problem with critical theory that Walsh notes throughout his book. Mm -hmm is that they have come into the university and they have uh, torn apart <coughs> excuse me, they've torn apart these different uh, different more uh, morality yes. they've tor- torn apart politics they've torn apart culture yeah. and they've just completely torn it down and they put absolutely nothing in its place right that philosophy now has started to permeate Christian institutions and the church. The most apparent manifestation of it in the church is what we call the emerging church, where these people come in as postmodernism. They come in and they deconstruct everything. Well, you know, the theory of atonement, you know, do you really need a God that's like that? And Mm -hmm. it's really not fair that God would be a child abuser like that. That's what guys like uh, Stephen Chalk and, and Brian McLaren say, you know. 
and they tear it apart. Yeah, they tear it apart to the point of saying we don't even have health. Yeah, yeah. Right, and they don't, but they don't put anything in its place. Right. The result is it's it's a very nihilistic philosophy. It it tears apart. It mm-hmm. destroys. It's destructive. But nothing's left in its place. And so now, for example, with the institution of marriage, what do we have? We have an institution that mm-hmm. really can't be defined on any rational basis. Why should it be just one man and one woman, or one, one man and another man, or a woman and a woman? Mm-hmm. Why shouldn't it be a man and two women, or three women and two men, or whatever people like because we love each other. And so what you now have done is you've completely seen this destruction play out in the core institution for society in just six months. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and like and you now, said, John, it's all it's all based on the flesh. It's what we want. It's based on the emotion of flesh. And guess what? You know, there's no moral compass when things are based on the flesh because the flesh wants to be an addict. You're an addict. You know, you want to look. If, if men want to wear women's clothes today, they want to wear women's clothes, and you're not allowed to say anything. But we know that with our Judeo-Christian ethics, you know, we walk by the Spirit to overcome the deeds of the flesh. I wanted to read something, just back up a little bit, what what Walsh explains, because I pulled this up today, that just like you were saying, Walsh explains that the leftist work was grounded on ideology that demanded for philosophical reasons an unremitting assault on Western values and institutions, including Christianity— the family, conven- conventional sexual mora- morality, nationalistic patriotism, and adherence in general to any institution or set of beliefs that block the path of revolution. And in, in his words, like you were saying, the Frankfurt School hated the old narrative of a confident, muscular Christian West. And in its place, they created what he calls the anti-narrative. Uh, and it goes on to say, which makes us begin to question our own history even. But like you were saying, it breaks down everything. This thought, this way, this religion, this leftist religion breaks down everything. And uh, John, you know, maybe you can give us a little more examples, but we know that leftism is built upon conformity. You know, they speak the same coded language, like we said, but they and they think the same thoughts, wear the same clothes, so to speak, if they're leftists. Uh, but if they don't, they are immediately ousted out. So how is, uh, how is leftism, I guess um, we can just talk about this real quickly and then probably on the other side of the break, but I want to talk about some of the hate crimes uh, that you talked about in your recent update. Uh, when we come back, because we are going on a break right now. We're with John Haller, a Prophecy Update. Please stay tuned. We're going to be continuing on leftism and how it has entered our culture while affecting our church culture. So please stay tuned. Many would agree that we are living in unprecedented times. Grave immorality is on the rise, as in the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. There are wars and rumors of wars as nations rise against nations. Prophecy is being fulfilled as the birth pangs become quicker and harder. These are the signs of the return of Jesus Christ. There is one sign often left untaught. Jesus also told the disciples in the Olivet Discourse to take heed that no man deceive you. This warning applies to us too. Deception has infiltrated the churches through many false teachings and movements, making apostasy paramount. As contenders of the faith, we do our best to research and discuss these false teachings for you, the listener. Thank you for having a love for the truth. If you just tuned in, I'm Cindy Hartline, your host here on Love for the Truth Radio. Our guest is John Haller. John is a watchman, an excellent researcher, and has spoken at national prophecy conferences, appeared on various radio programs and apologetic films. We're talking about leftism, uh, how it is built upon conformity. Uh, they speak the same coded language, like we said before, think the same thoughts, wear the same clothes, so to speak. And if they don't, they are immediately ousted out. Uh, John, uh, we talked about how leftism has been influencing the political realm. We talked about that before the break. And I wanted to, to go on and talk about the hate crime laws. Uh, you, you talked about that in your most recent update. 
And uh, who will be considered to be terrorists and extremists in our culture today? I think you've, you spoke about sure. that. Well, let me just back up uh, from, I've actually talked about it the last two weeks in our prophecy update, which you can find, by the way, on YouTube at, uh, just type in my name, John Haller, or Fellowship Bible Chapel, and our channel should come up. I do, most weeks I do a prophecy update, but in the last two weeks I've talked about this. I've talked about the, uh, the, the rapid change in the way this has come about. About two weeks ago, or three weeks ago now, uh, Loretta Lynch, now the Attorney General of the United States, went and held a press conference uh, or a press briefing at the United Nations. Part of what she wanted to do there was introduce this thing called the Strong Cities Network. And this is a network of large cities around the world, uh, cities like uh, Stockholm and Beirut and New York and other cities in America and elsewhere that are sort of partnering together to look at and deal with the air, uh, the issues that are facing them. Now, we know that there is this issue of terrorism. Now, our president, this shows the, the change in language, he will never call it the terrorism right. that it is. Mm -hmm. What we see going on in Israel right now is terrorism, plain and simple. Yes. He calls it violent extremism. Or in when he referred to the thing in France when Jews were slaughtered mm -hmm. by Islamic terrorists, he called it random acts of violence. Mm -hmm. All everyone in his administration... John Kerry says it, Barack Obama says it, and they're referring to the attacks going on in Israel right now, Palestinian Arabs attacking Jews, Islamic Palestinian Arabs attacking Jews. He's calling it random acts, random violence. Hmm. This shows what happens when this leftism infects someone. They lose the ability to reason. They can't even use the language the right way anymore. So... What's happened through the Strong Cities Network that the Obama administration is pushing, when you look, when you start drilling down through the various pages on the web Strong Cities Network uh, website, you eventually are taken over to other websites where the focus is really on right-wing extremism. Mm -hmm. Now, last Sunday, I followed up on that because first we have the Strong Cities Network, and then two weeks later, we have the Assistant Attorney General, John Carlin, speaking at a George Washington University symposium seminar on the new department that's been created within the Department of Justice to deal with domestic terrorism. Where they're getting their information from this, though, is from the Southern Poverty Law Center. The Southern Poverty Law Center is a leftist, mm. frankly, a leftist fascist group. They've labeled good some ministries here in town that deal with abortion and homosexuality in Christian terms, not hate terms, but they're on the hate map of the Southern Poverty Law Center. Hmm. Soon, Christians everywhere that take a stand on God's word will be on this because you are the problem because you are you are seen as an impediment to their building their utopia. And so what do we see happening? What, what do we see happening to these various utopian uh, socialist leftist governments that have been enacted around the world? For example, Scandinavia is in a state of collapse. Europe is in a state of demographic collapse. Now they're bringing in all of these Muslims, and their demographics are changing overnight. They have completely abandoned the culture yes. that helped build the West mm -hmm. uh, in today's Wall Street Journal, there's a very interesting opinion piece by Brett Stevens. He's probably one of the more astute editorial writers at the opinion writers at the Wall Street Journal. And he says this, his, his thing is, his article is called In Defense of Christendom. Having ignored its inheritance, Europe wonders why its house is falling apart. Europe is really in a state of collapse. And in there, he goes through, he says this, the death of Europe is in sight, still hazy and not yet inevitable, but nevertheless visible and drawing near like a distant planet in the lens of an approaching satellite. Europe is reaching its end, not because of its sclerotic, sclerotic economy or stagnant demographic, demography or the dysfunctions of the superstate, 
nor is, the, nor is the real cause the massive influx of Middle Eastern and African migrants. I might have disagreed with him on that. Those desperate people are just the latest stiff breeze against the timber of a desiccated civilization. Europe is dying because mm-hmm. it has become morally incompetent. Yes. And we know from studying American history that it was very clear that the founders of America said that if, as long as this is... Uh, this constitution is applied in a republic where the people have a moral foundation, it will survive. Well, frankly, Cindy, you know this, I know this, the evidence is absolutely overwhelming mm-hmm. that that moral fabric has been completely torn apart. Yes, it it's has. Been torn apart mm-hmm. by these leftist, socialist, Marxist people yes. that come in, they deconstruct everything, mm-hmm. they destroy, they put nothing in its place. So now what we're going to see is we're going to see, I have no doubt in my mind, it's Mm -hmm. already happening in Canada, it's happening in Ireland, it's happening in other Western countries. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about Islamic countries. I'm talking about Western Judeo-Christian democracies Mm -hmm. are enacting hate crime legislation. You're going to see uh, things introduced essentially that are going to say you can't criticize Islam. I have no doubt that that is coming. Yes. To do so will be a hate crime. And so what happens is the hate crime will essentially trump the Constitution protection, constitutional protection of free speech yes. and the free exercise of religion. And this is coming. We already see this We're type of seeing. nonsense happening yeah. in the university. I mean, another example would be... Um, I think it was at the University of Tennessee. They they don't want you to use he or she in papers anymore. I noticed you're, that. You're, you have to come up with these new words mm-hmm. because he or she is, shows some kind of uh, inherent sexism. This is this is it's, insanity. It's insane. It's insane. And you it can't is. use mother and father anymore either in some places. Some cases. Uh, that's right. Well, and, yeah. and they're changing that. Yeah. They're changing that on the. Um, um, marriage licenses and that type of thing. There, uh, there was a, uh, even I, uh, another article that I read today was out in San Francisco in a high school, they were instructing people about um, when a boy and girl are out, and, you know, they're out mm-hmm. and they're on a date and they start making out, you know, that they have to ask yes at all these different areas. And so they, after they had, they were instructed in this, then they went in and they surveyed the kids and said, well, what do you think of them? And they go, we don't know what to do. It's so confusing. We don't know when yes means yes anymore. And this is what's, it, and so I, I, I talk about this every week because I do think this is one of the characteristics of the end times. This uh, people will get teachers that for itching ears so mm-hmm. they can do whatever they want. Uh, men will wax worse and worse. Mm-hmm. And, do we not see this in our culture and society? Is this not apparent? Yes, it is. But then you have, you know, I, I played the quotes. I, it, what I like to do in my updates is rather than read what they said, I'd rather play the video and thank, praise the Lord for the Internet where we can get what they actually say. I play the clip of Barack Obama saying, the world's more peaceful now than it's ever been. Oh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. And, it's just, yeah. It, it's, it's, it, and so you have this, blindness Mm -hmm. well we've talked about it from a prophetic standpoint now one of the characteristics of the end times Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 says take heed that no man deceive you he talks about it more than any other characteristic of the end times yes and he says it four times in there yeah four times right and but if you as you look through the scriptures that give us a uh, outline for what's going to happen this deception plays out in many different areas. It plays out in the culture. Mm-hmm. It plays out in morality. It plays out in geopolitics. People will worship the worst person ever. Yes. A man possessed by Satan himself. Yes. They will wonder and worship after the beast. Mm-hmm. This is what, that is deception. That is a fog of deception, and it will play out in our religion, in, in Christianity, yes. is where we will notice it as much as anything else. And so, 
for the true believer, for the for the remnant church, it's going to be a very difficult, disconcerting time as yeah. we approach, as we get closer and closer to the end. Yeah. I had a conversation with uh, uh, Tom McMahon a number of years ago. Oh, this is probably six or seven years ago now, at least. And it was when the emerging church was sort of the hot topic. It just really become the hot topic in the last year or 18 months. And I, I said, Tom, what do you think about all this? And he said, you know, John, 25 years ago, Dave Hunt and I, or 20 years ago at the time, we wrote The Seduction of Christianity. Mm-hmm. That book would have come out probably in the late, somewhere mid to late 80s. And he said, at that time, we thought it could not possibly get any worse than it was Mm -hmm. before the Lord returned, and in the church. Yes. And now he says, in the last 12 months, I I can't believe I'm seeing what we're seeing, and and the Lord has not intervened. Well, now we're six or seven years down the road. It hasn't gotten any better. No. The left will tell you that everything's gotten better, that they're creating this utopian paradise, mm-hmm. but it's not. And as Brett Stevens says today, looking at Europe, Europe is dying because it has become morally incompetent. That's the point of Brett Stevens throughout this article. That's the point of Michael Welsh. That's mm-hmm. the point of in the Devil's Pleasure Palace. And that's the point of Diana West and American Betrayal. Mm-hmm. We are in, from my view... And I, it's hard to, I know I get criticized sometimes for being, boy, you're, you're really a downer, John. And I'm like, I'm just telling you what's going on. Yes. And so if you want a positive message from me, it's, I'm positive things are really bad. How yeah, about po- that? Yeah, how about that? Yes. Yeah, you know what, John, I was thinking just like when we look at this leftism, um, you know, it, it, it's a delusion. We're going to fall for the Antichrist. There's an antichrist spirit happening right now. Absolute truth does not exist in leftism. Just know that. Uh, Truth has been watered down in the church culture. And uh, we're going to talk about that. When we come back, we're going on a break now. We'll be back again with John Howard of Prophecy Update, continuing on how leftism's uh, turning our educational system into something else. So please, stay tuned. You're listening to Love for the Truth Radio. We'll be right back, so please stay tuned. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we read that men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, without self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. They will be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Thank you for having a love for the truth. Welcome back with us today to discuss the religion of leftism is John Haller, a trial lawyer of 30 years, co-founder and elder of Fellowship Bible Chapel in Columbus, Ohio. Be sure to check out his Prophecy Update videos on YouTube. You can look up Prophecy Update, dash John Haller, Prophecy Update, dash John Haller. That's how I look him up all the time. Wealth of information every single week to let you know what's going on. It's the cutting edge information that we need to know as Christians to be ready. Uh, John, we were talking about before the break, absolute truth, how it does not exist in leftism. Truth has been watered down in the church culture as well, in our uh, educational system. And as a result, our culture at large uh, has gone way off the mark, I believe, because of the leftism influence that we have had. Um, Why don't you continue, John, of uh, what you were talking about before, uh, we went on break, so you can wrap up your thought there. Well, uh, it, it's clear that what what we've done is we've become a morally relativistic culture. Uh, everything is turned upside down. Wrong is right, right is wrong, mm-hmm. down is up, up is down. And it's very difficult for people to get 
grounding in this. It's hard enough for Christians yes. who know the truth, yes. who follow the truth, who actively seek after the truth. And I think this is part of this great deception that Jesus said, and that Paul and other people who spoke prophetically have said would come about in the end times. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the interesting thing is, for example, it just occurs to me, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 8, Ezekiel chapter 8 tells what's going on in Judah just before the Babylonian captivity. Yes. And what you see going on is, first of all, uh, it's also talked about in Jeremiah, is the prophets came saying, hey, it's not that bad. Everything is okay. It's not really that bad. Mm-hmm. And it really is that bad. In fact, uh, Michael Walsh makes this very interesting quote in his book, The Devil's Pleasure Palace. He says this, looking at the world objectively, he says instead of the utopia, he's talking about this leftist utopia that they keep promising us, that Bernie Sanders says will happen, that mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton says will happen. Yes. Instead, as empirical evidence proclaims this world has become hell. Mm -hmm. The world sought by the Frankfurt School, these Marxists and the critical theory disciples is all an illusion. Just that he makes reference to uh, uh, Schubert's uh, opera, The Devil's, which translated means The Devil's Pleasure Palace. Mm -hmm. The corpses of the untold millions who have died in the attempts of the literally unholy left to found the kingdom of heaven here on earth, divorced from God, surely testify. Our pleasure palaces are many and varied, ranging from the creature comforts of modern civilization and its nearly endless opportunities for self abnegating entertainment to our gleeful, ollie ollie, oxen free abjuration of formal religion and to our false sense of enduring cultural security. In other words, it's all an illusion that they create. They mm-hmm. make it look like it's okay when it's really not. Yes. One of the leading proponents of this philosophy, in my view, this leftism religion, is none other than Pope Francis. Now, Pope Francis Mm -hmm. comes, and he will say Christian things, and he will give this appearance of Christianity. Now, first of all, you and I agree that Roman Catholicism is a false religion that is leading people not to heaven, but on the broad road to hell. And... But his, his, he uses the facade of Christianity as a prop for his leftism. That's really what drives yes. that man. Mm-hmm. And as I watched him when he was here in America, he talked about, in fact, a couple months ago, he issued a papal encyclical on climate change and how we're going to control everything and mm-hmm. we're going to make the climate better. We're going to control the weather. Yeah. This is... This this is Tower of Babel type yes, stuff that is. we're talking about mm-hmm. playing out right in front of us. We're going to make a better world. We're we're going to control the weather, mm-hmm. and it's it's man pretending that they're God. And the, one of the leading proponents of it is none other than supposedly the head of Christianity, the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church. And we know yes. that that's not false, but w- what drives him is his left his leftist religion mm-hmm. what drives Barack Obama and Bernie Sanders is not Christianity or Judaism or even Islam it's a belief that we're going to build for the first time in human history mm-hmm. we're going to build this and it's infected the church yes it has uh, yes, you it mentioned has. and i think in the break when we were talking you mentioned the peace plan of Rick Warren yes this is all part playing into this philosophy. We are going to build the utopia on yes. the earth. Yes. Now, some Christians, the Minionists and others, the emergents, they believe, well, if Jesus is going to come back, he'll come back when we've created the kingdom. Right. When we make it ready. Yeah. When we make yeah, when it we ready. when we make it ready. It, he'll want to come back because it's so wonderful. Mm-hmm. This has That's never, if, if the church was the, the was to do that, Mm -hmm. the church for two millennia has been an abject failure because it has never created anything resembling the kingdom of God that's described in Scripture anywhere on planet, even for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. It has not happened. Yeah. The kingdom will come when the king returns. That's right. If I could just go back to the... uh, So then Francis comes to America... He goes to the U.N., and part of it was to announce 
this 2030 global yes. strategic goals or strategic initiative that we're going to achieve all these things in the next 15 years. We're going to eradicate poverty. We're going to do this. The World Parliament of Religions followed through on that globalist agenda just last week. You can, you can even find some of the sessions still online. Yes. And I'll probably play part of Jim Wallace in my update this Sunday. Uh, and so we're going to do this. We're going to control the climate. We're going to eradicate poverty. We're going to make everything equal. We're going to create this utopia. And it's not going to work. Now, let me show you how this might play out prophetically. Mm -hmm. um, I think you and I talked about this. I really don't have time to get into it. We know that there is coming two beasts, an Antichrist and a false prophet, yes. that will, uh, the, the Antichrist will be possessed by Satan himself. But one of the things that's apparent from Scripture, and I'll just go through a shorthanded way, and I know this might not be perfectly accurate, but we're kind of short on time. In, in that last period of the 70th week of Daniel, the Antichrist will accede to power at the middle of that 70th week. It will commit the abomination of desolation. He will go into the temple of God and declare himself above all that is called God. But in his rise to power, he will use this, this false prophet, this head of a, a global religion, mm -hmm. to, to fuel his rise to power. Once he gets to power, as I understand it, he will destroy the woman, the harlot, that he rode to power on, this false religion. What's interesting, though, and I, I kind of had this thought when I watched pictures of the Pope and Barack Obama together, and I'm not saying that they are the two beasts, but I'm saying they're probably the best candidates I've ever seen. Yes, right. But, but I think I got a little bit of an understanding as to how this might play out, because what unites the two of them mm -hmm. is their religion of leftism. Yes. Their religion of control and of building a utopia on earth. Mm -hmm. This is what the Antichrist will do using the false prophet in his religious system. But what's interesting about if you look at their careers, when the religion is destroyed, mm -hmm. the false prophet is not. Right. I believe that that's an indicator that the false prophet will be uh, of use to the Antichrist during that period of his reign on earth, the time of Jacob's trouble, the last half of the 70th week, 1,260 days, Daniel tells us, mm -hmm. will be the length of his reign. And we know that the false prophet exists until the Lord returns, because it says in Revelation 19 that the false prophet, the Antichrist and the false prophet, are both thrown alive into the lake of fire. So the false... So I'm just suggesting that if this plays out in the current world situation, that it may be this religion of leftism. I know I think Patrick Wood would agree with that. Yes, yes. Because of the technocracy and yes. the elites and the control and that type of thing. Yes. And so, but it will use a false Christianity, yes. a false world religion as a prop to yes. achieve their ends. Exactly. And then it will destroy that false religion. So it's just kind of an interesting interplay mm -hmm. as to what's going on. Um, Absolutely. So we see that. So we see that playing out right in front of us in the geopolitical, mm -hmm. religious, new world order stage right in front of us. It is. We also see it playing out in our education system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the Common Core. Yes. We're going to train everybody in. Uh, you know, I played some clips of people on how they instruct kids to do, you know, 20, 23 times 17, and they go through like 80 steps to come up with an, I don't know how, I don't know how a kid would remember all 80 steps when you could just memorize some things and, and get it done the right way, or, uh, you know, there's a simple way to do that, but yeah. you got to go through, it. and so what's happening is, even in mathematics, where the principles are simple, understandable, formulaic, what you see them doing is they're deconstructing mm -hmm. that, and what happens is it creates tremendous confusion in people. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, if there is a natural law, a law written on their hearts, this is a ph philosophy yes. that undermines that and therefore Absolutely. makes it easier for the elites and whatnot that want to set up this utopia to control the masses. Yeah. 
This yeah. is this is the philosophy that's playing out. And as as Michael Walsh says in his books, empirical mm-hmm. evidence is that they're not creating a utopia. This world has become hell. And mm-hmm. you see this play out. I mean, Europe is in a total state of moral freefall, uh, cultural decline, and now with these immigrants coming in that don't share those values, right. what little there was left of them in Europe, yes. it, it's over. Yeah, it is over. It, 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 it really is over. And it's soon, it, it, I think it's all, we're well, well, well down the road here mm-hmm. in America and the United States. And this is a global problem. This, this nihilistic, morality-free, standard-free uh, culture, morality, everything, it's just, it's all in play. Everywhere in the world this is happening. And what happens is it, it allows people with power to come in to try to control things. Yeah, people with power that have the same leftist kind of philosophy that are... That are uh like-minded in that area, you know, and, and we see that they are generally, generally deeply concerned about human condition and are determined to help improve it. And this is where we see uh, social justice come in. You know, it's all good for the people and let's all get along, put our doctrines aside, the postmodern thought, and we're all here to help one another, like you mentioned before, uh, with uh, the peace plan of Rick Warren and then the emergent church. They all seem to have the same kind of leftist uh, religious philosophy going on. And that's what we're dealing with here, folks. So if you wonder what's going on in our culture, in our education system, it's a religion of leftism. We're going back on a break, so please stay tuned. We'll tell you how you personally can get in contact with John Heller of Prophecy Update. You're listening to Love for the Truth Radio. We'll be right back, so please stay tuned. I want to personally thank you for listening to Love for the Truth Radio. Please visit our website at www.lovefortheTruthRadio.com. That's www.lovefortheTruthRadio.com. Well, we've had a wonderful conversation with John Heller, commentator of Weekly Prophecy Update, found it on YouTube. Make sure you check it out. Uh, you know, John, we were talking about this leftism, um, the, the religion of leftism and how uh, demonic it is. And it's really the spirit of the Antichrist, and it's crept into every area of our lives. And the only ones that will be opposing it will be uh, Christian, real believers of Christianity. Uh, we will be called uh, terrorists and haters. Uh, of their ways and uh, of their agendas. So we're just going to have to watch out, uh, folks, about uh, persecution is coming. So please get your mind fully on Christ. John, do you have any further advice for us? Well, it's very easy to watch what's going on, Cindy, and to be driven Mm -hmm. to really a point of despair. But we need to know that this is exactly what, that Jesus laid this stuff out for us, the prophets laid this out, the the apostles who wrote scripture laid this out, that this is what we need to be prepared for, to watch it coming. It will operate on many levels. It will be very disconcerting. And so what people really need to do is they really need to be more committed to Christ than ever, to be in his word daily, to be in prayer about this, to pray that God will protect us and lead us. And God says that to the true believer, he will give us the things we need to say in that day. So stay in the Word. We have the hope that, you know, however we depart this life, we will be with Christ. That That's our hope. And mm-hmm. we need to keep focused on that. And we need to be uh, seeking out and fellowshipping with like-minded believers. I think that will be right. increasingly mm-hmm. critical as the day goes by. And I praise the Lord. You say a lot of bad things about social media, but social media has led a lot of people to be able to come yes. back and he's still there. Yes. Okay. Uh, social media has allowed a lot of people to come uh, together to find the other parts of the of the uh, of the other parts of the remnant for fellowship mm-hmm. and support, and we that's need right. that more in this day than ever. So that's what we try to do at Fellowship Bible Chapel. I do a weekly prophecy update most weeks. 
Uh, we also do teaching on the Bible, uh, different passages, ex- expository preaching and teaching uh, and discipleship. Uh, we put all of our teachings online. Uh, you can find them at Fellowship Bible Chapel on YouTube. Just do a search for Fellowship Bible Chapel, SP Chapel, or my name, John Haller, and those should come right up. Um, those are up every week, usually by 3 or 4 o'clock on Sunday. It's a thing that uh, God's really blessed our ministry in that regard, and we're so grateful for the people that listen. And I uh, thank you for what you're doing on this radio program and the way that you're keeping people informed in these last days. Thanks, John. You're a dear friend. And God bless you, audience. We'll see you next week.